my name is Fina Aruche. I have written a series of books, the first of which is called Jacobo Jacobo Football Star. Um, I am an Igbo girl. My parents are from Nigeria. I was born and raised in Liverpool, England, where I'm speaking from today. I'm very excited at the prospect of my book being available to young Nigerian boys. Um, thank you, Olatun, for making this possible. It's very exciting to be part of this event. Okay, I have a series of questions that you have sent me that I'd love to answer. You asked me what inspired Jacobo and um, what I hope the outcome of the book would be. Quite simply, what inspired Jacobo? Jacobo football star was my son Paolo. My son Paolo was in 10 or 11 at the time. And like everybody, we're in the middle of a pandemic and um, he was locked down. He was doing a lot of work online. He was doing a lot of schoolwork, and I've noticed that he wasn't so interested in reading beyond what he had to read. So beyond what was um, given to him by the school to complete his homework, he wasn't that interested in reading. And I thought, hmm. So I, I, I love reading. As an actor and a writer and a storyteller, words have literally changed my life, literally taken me around the world. And I wanted to inspire my son to read. So I created Jacopo. Jacopo is a mixed heritage uh, boy from Liverpool, my city, and he wants to become a football player in the Premier League. Like a lot of young boys, he's obsessed with Everton, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United, uh, you know. So I just wanted him to pick up something that he would enjoy. And also, because my son is blessed with athleticism, he is actually a young footballer. He's actually signed with an academy as we speak. And so it's a world I know about. I do believe that you should write what you know. And then I made his single parent mother, uh, Ifoma, good Nigerian name, I made her an actor because I know about that. And I realized that the two worlds could entwine nicely and I could educate a boy, inspire my boy, and um, go from there. What was really interesting for me is that he likes the book. I put it on Amazon. It's on Amazon worldwide, largely so I could print it easily and look at it and I illustrated it and uh, all of that. But what happened was it just started selling. <laughs> um, it's sold in Japan, it's sold in uh, the US of A a lot. I think uh, Americans are Anglophiles. His friends started to buy it and then it became two books. So it was a very organic uh, process. I love to write. I see myself as a storyteller and I very much just wanted my boy, my boy to read. And then I got inspired because I thought, wouldn't it be great if a lot of our boys would gain a passion for reading? And the only way you're gonna gain a passion for reading is to see something you res respect and something about you that you identify with reflected in the pages. Okay, all right. Number two, what was my inspiration? Well, I think I covered that. The inspiration from the book was when I was at the academies in Liverpool and Everton, um, there are a tremendous amount of black, African, Pan-African, Jamaican boys. Our boys are doing a lot. This, it's an area where uh, we talk about things being uh, unequal. And in, in Britain, certainly, there's been a thing called uh, Give Racism the Red Card. And people like John Barnes and lots of former players and current players, Mark, Mark, Marcus Rashford. There's all these people uh, who really come against racism and everything. And it's working because at the academy level, now, these are the boys that you don't know exist yet. These are the six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, all the way through to 12 and beyond where my son plays, there's a lot, lots and lots of boys of color. And I, the inspiration really, besides wanting my son to read, once I saw that was a story that isn't really being told, the extensive hard work 
and the, the, the legions and legions of boys of colour who, who were toiling in the trenches. So that was part of the inspiration. Okay, question two. You said, tell us about Fina Oruche, the storyteller. Mm. I suppose um, everything I do has story in the centre. So as I started out my career, I was a fashion model. Um, I lived, I started in London, ended up work, working in New York City, Paris, etc. And if you look at the spread of a fashion magazine, you'll see sort of an image of a girl doing something. So I've got pictures of me da being dangled off skyscrapers in New York, all to sell fashion. Um, I've got pictures of me dancing around a jukebox. They have pictures of a boy and a girl. Perfume ads have pictures of boys and girls um, selling fragrances. It's all a photographic imagery by way of telling a story. And so I did that for the first seven years of my career and I did it at a high level and I really enjoyed it. Um, but I then, I suppose, went into my main career and I think of myself as an actor. And act, acting is the ultimate storytelling, though you're not telling your own story, you're interpreting the story that somebody has written for you. And I've had very good successes doing that and I really, really enjoy it. However, um, as I've gotten older, I'm more conscious about the stories I tell and the things I want to say. And oftentimes the people who are telling the stories don't necessarily um, have your values or an understanding of your culture or anything like that. So as I've gotten older, I've started to write. Um, at first I was just writing in a sort of linear way, reporting what was going on in my local city of Liverpool. I used to write for a paper called the Liverpool Echo, I did about nine years for them. But then at a certain point, the creative impulse that I have and that I work from and the storyteller in me kind of fused. And in 2016, I wrote a play called Identity Crisis about a crisis of identity I think I was having um, that came up through these nine different characters. Um, about race, there was a lot of racial tension back then, um, about breakdown of marriage, because mine had broken down, about parenting, about, I had a death in the family, my cousin died at my home in 2012, and I think I was still processing the grief, but about many, many, many things. And so um, then again, that put me in a position that when I needed a story for my son, it wasn't out of the question for me to just write one. Because by that point, I feel very practiced as a storyteller. In your final question, you've asked me, are there any more books in the pipeline? I wrote it, my original book was an autobiography called Liberating Character, can be found on Lulu or Amazon. Um, I think I published that in 2012. Then these two books, uh, Jacobo, Jacobo, Football Star, and Jacobo Jacobo on lockdown, which is the second tale of this now 11 year old boy who finds himself in the middle of a pandemic and um, he finds himself in the middle of a pandemic and there's racial unrest because of the George Floyd and the many deaths of black men at the hands, black men and women actually, at the hands of law enforcement in the States and the ramifications around the world. So I wanted to write uh, an addendum to what I'd written to help our boys deal with the racial turmoil that they were feeling and seeing and some of them saw that very upsetting video that with, with George Floyd's life being lost and um, so I wrote that. Um, I've written, started to write book three in this series and um, there will always be books in the future. The, the book I'm writing right now is called Jacobo Jacobo on Lockdown, but I'm also writing a TV script called 69 about a, a May to December relationship. I'm very much interested in uh, controlling my own narrative, controlling the narrative of, of Africans. Um, oftentimes our stories are given to us by other people and I think that's odd because African history, we are the greatest storytellers in the world the greatest griots in the world. And so I think it's time for me to kind of lean into that legacy. And um, yeah, I will always write. I don't actually like it. I love writing Jacobo. 
love, love, love writing Yakubo in lockdown because it's fun, because it's for kids, it's light. Um, I enjoyed writing um, Identity Crisis, but sometimes writing can be a big chore. I don't get the same rush out of it because you're sitting in a room by yourself. So I don't love writing, but I think it's a necessary thing, uh, especially to control the narrative of people of color. I want to control my narrative. I want to control young people's narratives to a degree or at least add to it. So I will always write. Um, I hope that answers your question. I'm very, very grateful that you are looking at my book in Nigeria. I wish I was there because it's getting cold here. Um, and um, I hope the troubles that we're reading about um, will uh, be over soon and peacefully resolved. No more deaths. Thank you, Gabby, Olatun, Terence, all of you, Johnny, for reading. Thank you very much. And everybody that's tuning in. Lena Uruche, Yakubo Yakubo football star, available on Amazon. Bye-bye.